Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm following up on my video using Orca Slicer ironing, and today I'm doing an ironing calibration. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we take a look at Orca Slicer, I'd like to thank all my subscribers and those of you that have joined my YouTube membership. It means a lot. I really appreciate your support. So with that being said, let's take it over to Orca Slicer. In my previous video, I went over how to use the ironing settings in Orca Slicer, as well as maybe some initial optimum values for you to try. We tried some test prints. In my case, I found that I like the ironing on all top surfaces, and I like the ironing pattern, pattern of rectilinear. And I thought that all looked good. Now, two of the other settings you can play with are the ironing flow, as well as the ironing speed. In my case, I didn't really test those or play with those settings. But what I did find was a model you can use to calibrate those. So let's go over and take a look. Now, I should point out, I found this model on printables. And this model is by Leogan Pro. If you have a chance, you should take a look at it. Now, there's apparently a remix here to do this for Prusa Slicer. Right now, I believe this is set up for Orca Slicer, and that's where I used it. Now, in this model, we have two axes to look at. We have percentage of flow as well as speed. So along the, I guess, x-axis, we have speed in millimeters per second, y, we have the flow percentage. And in my case, what I've done is simply load this model up. So you're going to load it into Orca Slicer. Now, it comes in as a 3MF file, and so it may show up as a different printer, set it to your printer. One of the things the direction recommends is putting on a brim. So you want to make sure you're on global. Go over to other and you want to change this to outer brim. And what that'll do is when I slice it, instead of having 100 little individual circles, they'll all be attached via the brim. And that makes it really handy. Let me just show you what it looks like after I finish printing, because I want to talk a little bit more about these settings. But let me show you first. So with the brim on, everything's attached. It makes it really easy to handle and peels up real nicely from the bed. What we're going to do is I printed this out and we can take a look at which options look the best. And what I'm looking for is ones that are, I guess, the smoothest looking. You can look down here, you see how you see the lines on the models. I don't want that with ironing. Now, interestingly enough, I have in these higher percentages, a couple smooth looking ones. Now, really, everything is smooth up here towards the top. Now, looking at this carefully, I'm trying to identify ones that I can't see any lines whatsoever. And I'm looking at this top row, and I can barely see any lines on these right here. Now, I think what I'm going to do is leave my ironing set to 10%, because that's the 10% row. And in my case, that's 190, 80, 70. I think I'm going to go with a 70 millimeters per second. Now, 70 millimeters per second, I'm choosing that because I want the faster speed. The faster speed, of course, gets the print done quicker. So I'm just going to set that over here and work a slicer. Let's switch over and we'll make that change. Now, just to make sure I'm doing this correctly, I want to select this one. And under speed, down here is the ironing speed. And just to double check, I'll look at my model again. Yep, I like that 70. So in the future, I'm going to set all my models under quality. I'll go down here to ironing. I'm going to select all top surfaces, rectilinear, leave it on a flow of 
and then go over here to speed and change the speed for ironing up to 70. So again, nice and easy. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And again, I just want to thank the maker for this model, and I'll link it below in the video description. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.